going for surgical treatment of iliotis. Um, let us continue with the same scenario. The same patient uh, uh, went home with a combination treatment. Maybe there is nothing wrong in saying that uh, he had tamsulosin alone. The only thing favors him not to go for combination treatment is young age. So we don't want the patient to have unnecessary problems of erection or ejaculatory function at the young age. But um, say if he's not faring well, we will start a combination treatment. And uh, this patient is reviewed say in third month and also as a follow up, maybe in another six months time. Unfortunately, he was not happy and uh, his symptoms were quite bothersome. What is your next step? My next step was to see him in clinic, reassess his symptoms, storage, voiding, red flag symptoms. But knowing that he's past all that stage, I still think this is bad outflow obstruction. Now, will be considered surgical options. Surgical options can be described from something less invasive but less effective, such as um, Urolift Resume, which is a form of water vapor therapy, to things that uh, stand the test of time, such as transurethral section of prostate, which is our reference operation. Um, and a nucleation operation such as the whole lip operation. So let's, um, less um, other operations which are slightly less invasive could be prostatic artery embolization. Um, and then more invasive, although I'm unsure of the number of centers that do this, is open prostatectomies. Okay, let's assume that this is a real time patient and the patient is sitting in front of you. He tried tamsulosin and then a combination for another three, four months and he's not happy with that and also suffering from side effects. And uh, just to recollect for you, the patient has become from 48 to 49 when we are following up and uh, his prostate is 60 cc. So what is your choice? How will you do next? Okay, so I would ascertain why the side, what the side effects particularly. I mean, someone that's quite young, I would suspect the side effects are erectile dysfunction and retrograde ejaculation. Um, with a 60 gram prostate, as per the GERF guidelines, most options are available to him, that being um, Urolift, and, uh, if it was uh, appropriately counseled and addressed, particularly median low. Um, aqua, resume, aqua ablation, TRP, enucleation as well. Um, and that's all, as, and also vaporization as per um, GERF guidelines. Okay, the patient says, doctor, whichever is good, please select and uh, go for it. And he says, you are the expert. So which one you will go for? I would direct him to, um, it seems quite young, so the Canada, um, as per GERF guidelines, the Canada decision aid, which goes through all the pros and cons and how the procedures are done. Um, if he was looking for less side effects, then um, you're looking for less invasion, so such as Eurolift or um, water Vesium, which have less side effects on erectile dysfunction, as per the LIFT, lift study, looking compared to SHAM and BPH6 study, um, which show there's no change in erectile dysfunction. Prostatic artery embolization um, also has good effects or less effects on erectile dysfunction. However, um, as per the ROPE study, there's no long term evidence and that's only two year evidence um if he does want longevity um although happy to take the side effects um of retro retrograde ejaculation which is about 90 percent seen in any creation then i would recommend holep which um is beginning to become the reference test um form of treatment for blood outflow children. okay so what is your choice the patient again says that I'm happy with whatever you have discussed. I understand there are a few things I'm eligible for. How will you counsel him for any one of the procedure? Um, so I, I, I think um, it can also be used in a stepwise manner, ladder approach. So we can start from something less invasive. And if anything changes or things deteriorate, then you could go down to something a bit more invasive, such as the TYP and HOLEP. So I would offer a missed to minimally invasive surgery, such as uh, Eurolift. Okay, so what is Eurolift? What are the constituents? Uh, the constituents are um, a local anesthetic procedure, a day case. Um, it works by retracting the prostatic lobes laterally, and therefore opening up the channel to make people void better. Um, pharmacologically, it is a nitinol, um, sent with, um, it's a nitinol component of it with... Um, a stainless steel urethral plate um, connected together. Um, the nitinol aspect pierces the capsule and then the urethral stainless steel 
um, compresses the prostate, therefore opening up the channel. And we do that on multiple sides, um, depending on the morphology of the prostate. And that's also including median lobe. So that does not prevent someone from having a urolift procedure as per the Medilift study. Okay, what type of median lobe is uh, good for urolift and uh, is there any contraindications? So, um, urolift um, originally it was not used for median lobes. However, with the right uh, with people that have been doing it for a while and experienced hands, um, we know that um, median lobes can be retracted to one side or another. Um, and as per the Medilift study, that, that tells us it, it can happen and it can be done. Similar effects. Okay. Uh, any other latest evidence you are aware of regarding Eurolift? Um, the two big studies, so we have a prospective study, which is the BPH6 study. Um, and um, that, that was telling us how, how good it was um, comparing it to TURP, although, um, although it didn't have the same um, IPSS and QMAX effects it did have um, better quality of life and the impact score, which they used the BPH impact score um, test. And the other one would be in the LIFT study. Um, it was first done by two years compared to SHAM. But then recent studies, I think in 2021, it was extended to five-year data showing its durability. Okay. Uh, what is the role of Eurolift in patients with retention? Um, again, that, that has been... Um, proved by, I believe, um, Rochester's team um, by um, 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 by Rochester's team, I believe, um, just for the um, the study. But um, um, it can be done in acute urinary retention patients. Okay. What that was done by just the team. Okay. What complications can happen with the urethral lift? That can be divided into general and specific general happens majority of operations which is um, problems with the anesthetic um, pain infection uh, bleeding because we are doing some intervention and specific for this procedure you can have early you can find that into early and late early being um, hematuria um, lasting for a few days to a few weeks um, this area as well and then long-term effects is um, re requiring retreatment up to 15 um, percent and also uh, regrowth by um, further procedures, so failure of the procedure. There's also incrustation of the um, the instruments, uh, leading to stones and further procedures, and um, it's potentially migrating if it was not displaced properly, uh, placed properly. Okay. Uh, in real life, let us assume that you are doing a prostatic urethral lift for this patient. Just for the discussion's sake, what do you know about intraprostatic injections? Um, so, interprosthetic ejections, um, if it was form Euro, if it as f as per Eurolift, um, I would say that it's associated with uh, bleeding and infection, and it's important to know the size of the prostate before undertaking such procedures. Um, if you were considering injections such as Botox into the prostate, that is not recommended as opposed to EAU and at NICE guidelines, um, and that's old data. Okay. Um, what do you know about the procedure ITIND? ITIND is a, 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 a new um, minimally invasive procedure. Um, the evidence of which is, is low evidence. Um, I think the evidence was populated by um, Pobiglia in Italy. And they did a um, perspective trial showing um, its effect, efficacy. It incre increases, improves QMAX by about um, 40%, I would say 30 to 40%. It works by um, using um, three pronged, three sprungs, it placed them within the prostatic urethra, kept for at least five to seven days and removed all under um, cystoscopy, whether that be uh, rigid cystoscopy. It, by placing the stent, so the urethral stent, into the prostatic urethra, it causes pressure and pressure necrosis, and therefore um, improvement and opening up the uh, urethral channel. Okay. Um, as uh, I said, it was po populated by the Corbiglia um, perspective trial study, no trial. Okay. What do you know about the prostate stints? 
Um, prostate stents are not no longer used as recommended by NICE. Um, the last thing I would say is that with regard to all these things, that there is a new s study coming endorsed by Newcastle, which is the premise study, telling us which works better. And they randomize, they are randomizing recruiting for TYP versus ITIND, Resume and Eurolift. And hopefully that will be able to give us our information. Okay. Uh, what is the role for the prostatectomy, simple prostatectomy? Simple prostatectomies, as per GIF guidelines, are recommended for patients or can be an option for patients with 80 gram prostate or above. Um, again, simple prostatectomies can be done, I guess, if there are any contraindications for the other options. Um, ordinarily, people would do it with um, an open cystostomy route, either retropubic or Millen's fashion. However, um, there are some centers out there that are using a robotic approach. Okay. Regarding the resume, what is the mechanism, how it works? Resume um, is a form of way to vapor therapy. Um, it's been licensed as per the Gilling team in, um, in sorry, the McVary team. And it works by using steam ablation to the prostatic tissue. It's performed by using um, under rigid cystoscopy, um, particular equipments, needle with an open channel. It's inserted into prostatic urethra, depending on how si the size of the prostate, and depending on that will dictate how many injections in the prostate. Um, um, each injection lasts nine seconds. And again, um, that's repeated depending on the si length of the prostate. Um, small side effects that again, efficacy is quite good as per the McVary trial study trial. Um, and Improves Qmax by about 40 to 50 percent uh, with retreatment rates, again, roughly similar to um, Eurolift by the name of 50 percent, 13 to 50 percent. Okay, your time completed now. How do you think you did? Um, I think I waffled a bit. Uh, I think I didn't answer the question a few times. Um, I mean, it's, it's not bad, but we are just starting first time. So it takes some time for us to settle uh, down with the flow, etc. But the quality of answers are quite good. I am not concerned with the quality of the answers. Um, but still, there are some small space to improve because this area is such a fast pace, um, moving area, a lot of changes happening and also very packed with a lot of values and names, etc. And uh, I'm glad that you brought in the rope study, which also not very good in showing the long term management for the prostatic artery embolization and also various systematic reviews and meta analysis also showed PAE is not super duper. So at least from urologist point of view, we should not encourage it. We should not lose the prostate surgeries to the radi intervention radiologist. Regarding Eurolift, I'm happy for you to mention it like it's a procedure which can be done under local anesthesia. Nothing wrong in it. As you know, few people are doing it, but not everybody is doing it. It's only like I will say less than 5% of the actual Eurolift surgeons are doing it completely under local anesthesia. Many, many use at least sedation or just uh, LMA anesthesia, etc. So uh, don't get uh, fixed to LEA. And uh, I wish you to bring NICE guidelines because NICE is working very hard to bring individual medical technology appraisal, MTA types of leaflets. The easiest way to remember is for Eurolift and ITIND, both it's September 2022. Both came in the same month. And uh, so remember few here, for example, resume is June 2020, slightly older. And uh, Again, regarding the information leaflet, we have for Eurolift, we have information leaflet. For Resume, there is no information leaflet as such in the our bows.org website, but the guys in, in charge for Resume, they have already prepared the leaflet. I think it's in the process of just uh, uh, committee review, etc. So we should be able to. I think it was a Resume Bows, actually. I forgot to say. It was Bows. There's a Resume leaflet on Bows. Yeah, the, but the leaflet was absent for Resume for a very long time. And just now it started appearing in the Bows leaflet. But for Eurolift, we always had the leaflet. And uh, yeah, premise study, as you said, Newcastle is a good one. It's a four prongs, four arm study, uh, which uh, if successfully completed, will give us a lot of idea about uh, which arm is not doing well. 
and uh, regarding the retention you should be able to bring the name of the study uh, of course you can mention it like uh, rochester et al but the name of the study is pulsar it is yeah. uh, even though it's an old study it was uh, uh, published as abstracts in eau aua and bjui at least two years if not three years back subsequently but actual publication happened only last month in bjui uh, bjui campus or focus something like that so september bjui last month as far as the actual full article publication is concerned so i think you did well i have no concerns uh, sometimes the examiners will be more than happy to discuss the monopolar and bipolar turp so just be confident in those things also the other thing which we missed is accoblation accoblation has got again nice medical technology appraisal uh, there are studies like water 1 and water 2 studies maybe next round if you are doing the bph again we can do accoblation bit in detail because it can branch out anywhere so that's why as i asked sometime the examiner instead of asking you what are all the energy sources available where you will be discussing six seven energy sources parallelly the examiner will say which one you prefer and so you can prefer whichever you want so in your hospital by chance if accoblation is available nothing wrong in choosing it because no not many students will choose accoblation and it can give you a uh, quite good mark and uh, nice as released uh, the mta appraisal for accoblation january 2023 and um, as i said when i post the video there will be in the background you will get all the nice guidelines month year details everything so pause the video and you can follow it uh, quite easily any other questions before we conclude today's session and has a question but i was yeah. going to ask how would you describe eurolift just just one more time and is there yeah. any other prosthetic urethral lifts because it says prosthetic urethral lift in in um girth but i don't know anything else other than eurolift no regarding the eurolift if you want the studies uh, the nice guidelines as i said september 2022 that has most of the things and you are quite correct in the components of the eurolift uh, prosthetic urethral lift evidence starts from lift study and then we have the bph6 study i think you mentioned both of them and uh, following that uh, we had a few cochrane review in may 2019 which compared whatever uh, publications available till then and uh, mid lift study for the median lobe so any median lobe less than 1 cm and compressible it is suitable for the euro lift and mid lift study came in 2019 and as i said pulsar study for acute retention september 2023 last month and uh, yeah i think euro lift this is enough and if you if the your question is like how will you explain euro lift to the examiner if the examiner asks you euro lift of course you need to say euro lift there is no other choice but if the examiner gives you the open choice explain any one of the minimally invasive treatment if you are comfortable with euro lift nothing wrong in starting them because uh, it has got like you know how the mechanism it works and uh, components of euro lift and there are a good amount of uh, handful of studies which you can bring in as much of factual information you bring in that gives you good amount of mark so imagine like this one by third of the mark is for factual uh, knowledge like uh, as you mentioned about the uh, rochester et al study pulsar study all this factual knowledge which is quite difficult which is the most uh, uh, hard work part of the whole preparation that's why you are working and i will say burning the midnight oil whatever the second one is the actual flow which i think i don't have no concerns with any of you uh, the reason why we are giving importance to the flow is in the essence after finishing the fss exam you will be suitable for a year one consultant so we don't we want the year one consultants to be good in communication with the patients with the team etc etc so that's why the communication in flow which usually is not a concern for uk uh, exam goers maybe a concern for some international people the third one is the actual application of knowledge in clinical practice so as i said if the examiner's question is choose any one of the minimally invasive treatment and explain how will you do uh, in the patient's uh, prostate is 60 cc so no way you can choose a simple prostatectomy isn't it so it's good you are choosing the correct one and you are applying the knowledge to the patient so if you are choosing like resume or eurolift or itin they're all quite good including to urp of course 
and um, similarly the previous one 49 year old even though prostate is 60 um, the candidate correctly mentioned that i will try not to put the patient on dual treatment even though nice guidelines may say any prostate more than 30 cc we need to start dual treatment but i will try to see whether he's happy with tamsulosin alone fair enough that's where the third uh, one by third part of the application of the knowledge comes into play so factual knowledge which you can just read spend your time within four walls you don't need any help you just have to memorize things like this drawings uh, about the abraham griffith's number etc etc they're all factual knowledge the second one communication which usually won't be a factor but if the other two factors may affect the scoring in the communication also the third one application is more important that's where your actual clinical supervisor or your this kind of sessions where we can help you to say exactly how to bring out the knowledge which you are reading that's why this kind of viva sessions will be useful to see how you are presenting it in a very methodical manner not unnecessarily going towards unnecessary danger areas etc uh, but otherwise today all four of you did well but i've given appropriate uh, rough, um, feedback then and there and um, the usual format is exactly 10 minutes but we can finish the answer if it goes above the 10 minutes and we'll give the feedback then and there and i will send you the recordings also as soon as uh, it's available any other questions before we conclude today i, I can't see you recording that's the last thing yeah I, 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 I i'm doing it in the background yeah i don't do it in the oh, zoom okay. the zoom recording is not of good quality don't worry understood yeah okay Thank you. um yeah go ahead mr mr Dennis, again just a quick question i think which you answered um regarding the median lobe yeah. um you said if it's above one centimeter um it obviously causes problems but if it's under one centimeter then it can be managed with the euro lift correct yeah so middle lift study said that the median lobe should be the, uh, the exact terminologies again so when we are saying this if you bring some terminologies that ticks you in the factual knowledge component the actual terminology is intraprostatic enlargement if it is less than one centimeter and uh, if the median lobe is compressible mid lift will give good outcome uh, again we should make sure that even with for median lobe we should not fire at six o'clock because of the danger of injuring the rectum uh, the median lobe should be carefully compressed and uh, fired maybe around uh, three o'clock or four o'clock so that it is nicely pinned down and uh, mid median lobe usually takes one or two implants to give a nice opening if the median lobe is more than one centimeter or if it's like a ball valve type they are all contraindications for euro lift this can be decided based upon the pre-operative flexible cystoscopy assessment sure um one further question i had um was it may not be relevant but a, a person's risk for potential prostate cancer and having histology available at the time of doing bladder outlet procedures would that influence the or sort of guide towards what type of bladder outlet procedures you do because certain outlet procedures don't have any um, tissue available and some do therefore uh, analysis of that can yield um, certain pathologies and that might dictate or further management of that patient so would that influence your decision or not really in in the era of mri yeah uh, i will answer this question in two prongs the first one is is it necessary to choose the procedure based upon the patient's possible high susceptibility to prostate cancer say sometimes if the psa is slightly on the higher side yes. you may have yeah you may have done mri which may come out as pyrat 2 because if your psa is on the higher side or psa is abnormal you will certainly do mri and if the mri shows suspicious pyrat 4 pyrat 5 the whole discussion will go in a different angle you will do a transperineal maybe historically transductal prostate biopsy and then take it forward but the question comes if the PSA is just below the higher normal and if your MRI is also okay like Pyrat 2 or something like that and uh, mm -hmm. the answer is performing TURP with a view of getting histology to rule out prostate cancer is absolutely wrong practice because in EAU guidelines it's quite clearly mentioned that don't do TURP with a view of getting the histology to prove or disprove prostate cancer 
because we know that prostate cancer is predominantly a peripheral zone disease in okay. TORP even though some good resectionist will go capsule to capsule 360 degrees there is always a chance of leaving a good chunk of peripheral zone so doing a TORP for the purpose of getting histology is a wrong practice according to EAU guidelines the second thing as you know the procedures like ITIN, Eurolift or Resume or Aquablation they don't give any meaningful histology even though in accommodation you can get a kind of a, a, a gluey stuff which you can send it for histology but it's very very rare to find a good meaningful prostate cancer diagnosis with that slush whatever we are getting from accommodation and um, the other questions could be like if a patient has high chance for prostate cancer maybe like uh, Afro Caribbean in origin or the father or uncle or any other significant family history etc when you are doing Eurolift you should counsel the patients number one the patient should be aware that doing the Eurolift and subsequently if the patient's PSA became abnormal and if he required an MRI there is a possibility that the implants can cause the like a heart beaming effect like any other like a hip prosthesis or something like that so we may not be able to image a small part of the prostate where the implants are present that is one thing the otherwise um, it should not affect other pathways like for example the rest of the prostate can be nicely quantified and if the patient has pyrat 4 or 5 uh, doing a transperineal biopsy is quite straightforward transperineal biopsy not supposed to disturb the pet sutures and then by chance if the patient unfortunately found to have prostate cancer and heading towards say radiotherapy the uri the, the urolifts uh, capsular nitinol taps will help as a fusidial marker so there is a small advantage of it and um, uh, there is a study by name CoStar which is a randomized study of patients awaiting radiotherapy for known prostate cancer proven prostate cancer but with significant LUTS they are randomized to channel TRP and Eurolift so we are waiting for the results um, uh, the, I'm not surprised if that study, uh, the study name is CoStar. Uh, I'm saying again because it is not in the slide. And um, I'm not surprised if the study showed that uh, Eurolift is good because already these patients are on, say, bicarotamide for the first four weeks for flare symptoms and also LHRH uh, injections were given. So these itself modify the gland. And along with that in the future if they are getting towards radiotherapy that combination itself can cause good amount of result so there is a good possibility the co-star study will come out with a recommendation stating that if a patient is heading towards the radiotherapy by histologically proven prostate cancer if he has significant urinary symptoms or the patient has got a catheter because of acute or retention or some episodes like that then uh, Eurolift is equally a good option compared to channel TRP. I hope that will be the outcome uh, because apart from Eurolift apart from channel TRP there are other factors which are also helping in patients uh, urinary symptoms. So this is another thing uh, for pro linking prostate cancer with the benign diagnosis etc. Uh, yeah any other questions? For Thank you very much. Good. And uh, let me stop the recording now. The next scenarios will be on andrology. I will post individual messages on the date and time. And thank you for everyone joining today.